in Christ our Epiphany King, dearly beloved friends. The story of the calling of those first disciples seems to be straightforward, plain, and clear. And in one sense, it is. Jesus, walking along the Sea of Galilee, calls. He calls to Peter and Andrew and James and John, and as he calls them, they follow. No questions, no discussion, call and follow. And the story makes perfect sense to you and to me. After all, this was Jesus who was issuing the call. This was the Messiah. Why would they hesitate? Why wouldn't they follow immediately and be overjoyed? And in one sense, that's very true. But, you know, the call and the following between all of that, it is not quite as simple as this gospel lesson might make it seem. It may have been for those first disciples, but even for them, the first lesson which connects us to the story of Nineveh and Jonah makes it very clear Nineveh wasn't his first choice for a short trip to do a few things. It was the last place on earth he wanted to go. And yet he was called and he followed begrudgingly. And the trip along the way, however you might want to understand it, was not the happiest. All sorts of delays and problems, known, unknown, mythical, and otherwise. We tend to simply think Jesus called, they followed. There were no contracts to be signed. There was no questions about how long, where are we going, what are we going to do, what are the hours, what are the benefits. No. Jesus calls, they followed. And that proves interesting. For us, it's simple. Of course, it was Jesus. For them, it was this ragtag teacher, a radical on the fringe of the religious community, disliked by Pharisee and Sadducee alike. He said all the wrong things, did all the wrong things. It was the kind of thing that, well, we say they had faith. But when you think about it, yeah, they had to have some faith, a lot of faith, or they were just plain crazy. And yet they followed. And you know from the history that following would involve for all of them great cost. They would get involved thinking their future was with this rabbi. And by what we call Good Friday, it was gone. By what we call Easter Sunday, surprising things had happened that no one could believe. By Ascension Day, they weren't sure what was happening as he disappeared in front of their very eyes. And by Pentecost, they did have the power and enlightenment of the Spirit that finally enabled them to follow even to the point of death, many of them giving their lives as martyrs. It seems so easy. Jesus calls, they follow. And yet you know and I know the same thing happens for you and for me. Jesus calls us and makes us his own in holy baptism. 
Jesus calls us and invites us to come to his holy table and feast on the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Jesus calls us to engage one another with peace and power, with compassion and with grace. Jesus calls us to reach out to the community and to reach in. And yet, you and I both know it's not as simple for us when Jesus calls to simply say, yes, I'm here, Lord, and I'm willing to do whatever you want. Because it's so easy, difficult, easy, perplexing, between that call we all have in baptism and the reality of following daily the path that leads back to God. For along the way, like those first disciples, who sometimes we just think, oh boy, it was easy because it was Jesus and they could see him. Like those first disciples, all along the way for you and me, there are temptations, there are challenges, there are difficulties. And there are no guarantees. The guarantee is simply the faith, the grace, the salvation won for us on the cross by Jesus Christ. We travel along the way. We follow. And yet it's so difficult some days to hear the call of the Lord. Those disciples left apparently because they wanted to. They got to follow Jesus. They didn't get out of their boat and go, oh God, I've got to follow this guy. They were willing to do it even if they didn't know what the outcome would be. We know already what the outcome will be. You heard it earlier, life, salvation, and resurrection from the dead. And along that way, we need to get out and get out from under the temptations to give in to our selfishness, to give in to what we want, to simply think that Jesus calls, but he calls us when it's convenient for you and me. And when it's convenient, then we're happy to fulfill our obligations. There's a whole group of baptized people out there who live that way. The call in baptism was a traditional one. And they live seeking the convenience of that family of faith only when it serves their own purposes. Are they misguided? Yes. But we fail when we sit here and let them live that way. We're called to follow. We're called to reach out. We follow Jesus into this community. We follow Jesus into our ministries. We follow Jesus and encounter one another so that we might change things to conform to the love that Christ has for all of us. So frequently, we make this following only a personal thing. It's about what I do and I do alone. And yes, at one level that's true. But we are also a family. And when family members are not together, when family members don't show up regularly, they need to be missed and we need to tell them they are missed. To tell them that when Christ invited them to follow, when they were given the gift of eternity, it came with not have to, 
but that they get to praise God in worship. They get to praise God in service. They get to praise God by what they do everywhere they go. It's not I have to go to church. It's not I have to go to work. It's not I have to this or that. I get to because God is good all the time. That doesn't mean it's easy. That doesn't mean we might not have questions. Jonah wasn't happy, but he followed. We may not always be happy, but the Lord calls us to follow God's way. Love for God and love for the neighbor. And that's what distinguishes us from those in the world who think their only responsibility is to exercise power and influence over others to benefit themselves, who seek to abuse the privileges given to hurt and harm others, who seek to amass wealth without the concern for those who have nothing. We're called to follow in a different way. And the call comes from the one we know who keeps his promises. The call comes from the one whom we confess as my Lord and my God. The call comes from the one who says, do this to remember me. And as he gives his life for us, so we are free to give our lives for others. When we fail to do that along the way, when we miss the mark, and that's the definition for sin, this Christ calls us back. This Christ renews our spirit, creates in us clean hearts, and sets us on the path again. Always following the one whose voice tells us, follow me, care for the poor, follow me, feed the hungry, follow me, seek justice, follow me, remind people all are to be included. Follow me, house everyone. Follow me. No one left out. No one sits on the margins anymore because they are not valued. Christ gave his life on a cross for all the world, and we are called to follow into that world so that people might know the redeeming power of a God who makes all things new. What does that mean for each and every one of us? Different things. The Holy Spirit will guide you and me in those ways. But it certainly means an outreach to those who aren't with us. An outreach to those who are hungry in our community. An outreach for justice everywhere and an end to violence. In so many things, the world tells us we are to be mindful and the new word, I don't know if it's a word or not, but it's certainly used. The task always is to exercise mindfulness, kind of meditation and reflection, I would suppose. And where else do you get to do that? Certainly here, before service and during, and after if you wish to stay, there are opportunities to be still and know that God is God, to be mindful of Christ's call to follow and to 
consciously and subconsciously work out in our minds what actions we must take. Sometimes it's difficult to do that. And they will tell you, you need a companion, <coughs> a partner. It's hard sometimes when we engage in a new diet and exercise program. So they tell you, find a buddy. Because when you promise someone else you're going to do it, it's not as easy to sit in bed when you're supposed to be out jogging or at the gym or pushing away from the plate of cookies. How about finding a church buddy? Not your spouse, not your significant other, not your partner. Take the list of the church office. Find a church buddy and say, you know, I could use your help and maybe you could use mine. That's what it means to be mindful about our following. And when we come here, this is the beginning and the ending. But in between that call to be here and the following during the week, it's never easy. It's always challenging. But the God who leads the way is always good. Those first disciples, somewhere in their heart of hearts, had the faith to know that. We, too, have been given that same faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, all we need to do between Christ's call to us and our following of him, in between, we need to make the right choices and help others do the same. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.